So the first exercise we're going to do is, I call it windshield wipers. And I'm going to set up my bow fingers once again. I'll hang them this way. I've noticed that I'm still holding the bow here in the middle of the stick. So I'm hanging my fingers, set my bow hand. I'm going to put my thumb on the inside because that's how I'm used to doing this. And this is also my wrong hand. So when we start our windshield wipers, uh, notice that also that my elbow, I'm going to have my arm out straight like this. So my elbow is not locked, but it's, but it's straight. And we're going to be using our wrist to do this. So I'm going to start from a straight up position. Okay, this is a neutral position. And in this position, if I've got a good thumb, I should be able to lift either my index finger or my pinky finger off the bow. Not both at the same time. Well, maybe both at the same time. Okay, so that means that you have a really strong thumb. From this, this is going to be the start position for the windshield wiper. So violinist players especially, you're going to tap your pinky finger. Cellos, you don't have to do that. You're just going to leave your, your pinky curved around like this. And everybody should be checking for their bent thumb, bumpy thumb, this way, when the hair is facing up. Then we go upright. And then we come over this way and now I'm going to lift my index finger off. If you can't do that, it means that your pinky finger is not strong enough to support your bow. So this is really when I lift my index finger off, it's my pinky and my thumb that are supporting the bow. So here's the windshield wiper. I'm just going to move back a little bit this way. So we go one, tap the pinky, up straight and over, index finger, back up straight. Hair is back up, tap your pinky, check your thumb, up straight and over. Index finger off, back to neutral and over, tap your pinky, two more. Last one, check your thumb, you still have a bent thumb, tap your pinky, bow up straight, over and index finger. Okay, next one. The next one is just a wave. So violin players, we're going to have our bow at kind of shoulder height or chest height. We've got our fingers on our bow hand. I'm going to just have my, my other hand just supporting the, um, the middle of the bow stick this way. And from the side, so you can see my wrist moving up and down like this. And it's just a wave. Na 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 na, na 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 na. Hey, hey, goodbye. So your fingers are all sitting on the bow and you're able to flex your wrist up and down. If you're a cello player, you're going to do this lower down, sort of belly button height. And for cello players, when you go to position your bow hand, you're kind of dropping your fingers onto the bow, kind of like you have a dead hand and you're dropping on. Violin players are hanging more, but cello players are dropping from here. And so their wrist is kind of bent anyway, but we can still do this at cello height and bring it up. Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey hey, hey. goodbye. So you could do uh, maybe a set of four of those, sing that little song four times. Okay, next we have the open and close. So the open and close action, I'm just gonna show you from the side a little bit this way. Notice again, I'm just holding the stick of my bow with my hand facing up, not on top, just underneath like this. This is just for support here. And we're going out and in, out and in. When I go out, my pinky finger, I have a longer than average pinky finger. So for some of you, your pinky probably isn't even going to touch the stick of the bow anymore. And that's okay when you're out like this and you're fully extended. As you come in, your fingers should curve back in again. So we don't want our pinky sort of flying off somewhere, you know, or being stiff like this on the end of the bow and pushing. The pinky shouldn't ever push on the bow. It's, it's forcing down, but it's not actually pushing on the bow. And out and in, and out and in. For cello players, your bow is actually it's kind of like the action of pushing something off a table. I'm, I'm pushing something away. 
So cello players would be going to the side and pushing to the side. Now I have an extension of the open and close exercise for violin players. I call it open, close and wipe your nose. So this is to practice getting closer to the frog with your bow. I find a lot of beginning violin students and even a lot of advanced violin students have what I call frogophobia, that they really are afraid of getting their bow right down to the beginning of the frog. Um, so when we're playing at the frog, we have all of our fingers curved like this and our wrist is going to fold in and touch our nose. So the trick is to have keeping that curvy pinky finger, don't let it go out straight like this, keeping the pinky finger bent. And I'm going to do this on the D string so you can really see the open and close. So I open and close. And I use my wrist to wipe my nose. So my wrist has folded in. And now I'm really right at the frog. I can set my bow right at the frog. Fold it in and touch your nose. So the action, just without my bow for a minute, is this. If you don't want to do it with a bow, you can practice it this way. Open and close. So we have both of our hinges, our elbow and our wrist working. And actually our finger hinges need to work as well because I can't have my fingers out stiff like this. My fingers at the, when I'm going to the tip of the bow are open like this, but when I go back to the frog, they have to curve back in. Watch one more time. So my fingers are going, sorry, I'm trying to stay in the, in the camera shot here. My fingers are going out straight. As I come back in, the fingers curve and the wrist has to curve. That's really tough technique to work on and it's best to do it on open strings. Try it on D string and A string. Uh, but just remember that you have to use your wrist to fold in. And if you're not sure how to do it, do it without a violin first so you can practice that action. Okay, my last exercise is kind of a fun one. I don't think we've ever done these in class, but I call this the spider. So this is gonna be harder for me because this is my wrong hand. So we start at the frog and we have to shimmy all the way up the bow and no cheating. Cheating would be just letting the, letting the stick slide through your fingers. So this is my spider has to shimmy all the way up to the tip of the bow. And when I get to the tip, now this is the hard part because now I have to go back. And it's harder on a cello bow because the frog is even heavier. The stick is shorter on the cello bow. And you can see that I'm using my thumb. My thumb is staying bent the whole time because it's actually way easier and I have to alternate my thumb and my fingers. So, and there we are back to the frog, right to the frog. There we go. So please don't forget to loosen your bow when you put it away because you're, you're taking care of it for the next little while. And, uh, and we'll see you next time.